there'll be a couple of years of developing the marine trade and vessel park, and as we are going to see, it's um, just getting ready to uh, uh, make it into their finished building. And we very much appreciate the opportunity to uh, find funding that helps to help us finish that building so that we move into it. The continued work on trying to bring airline service here, we feel that once we can uh, obtain airline service, that will also help support that. So those are kind of the three large um, strategies for <coughs> over time developing the dock. The um, effort of working with existing uh, businesses to, to understand what their barriers are or what would help them create uh, more jobs. An example of that is the washdown facility that we just talked about when train customer that having a washdown facility that they all could use instead of each individually trying to figure out how to wash down a vessel um, <coughs> with respect to work on it. That is a project that we need up in our uh, schedule and even though we've been part of the Ministry of Defense, we have moved it, it forward uh, because of realizing how they can increase the throughput that the, the American uh, trade companies have. Yeah. So that's another example of what we're trying to use our infrastructure, what, how we invest in our infrastructure so it can make a difference in the jobs that are created. Yeah, I think one of the things that we've learned uh, is that some of the best ways of increasing jobs is to support local businesses and expanding. That's generally a higher percentage than trying to get an a outside business to move here. And so we have actually several tenants that we are, we are helping with in their expansion process. FKC, um, they stay very under the radar. <coughs> they're expanding and um, almost, they're almost about a half again their footprint is being enlarged. And and so the, with in combination with the EDC, trying to make a big effort on have, helping the local businesses, you know, be able to expand, because that's just a, a higher percentage of increasing jobs than necessarily trying to hit a home run to, to bring a big business in. There are, there are a few smaller businesses, 10 and 20 employees, though, that we're working with as well that are interested in coming to our own trade industrial park or just somewhere on our property now, but that's not out for public um, digesting at this point, but it will be, you know, it's all uh, being negotiated at this point. Um, <coughs> the thing I would love to emphasize is the fact that at our Marine Trades Industrial Park, the former Chemply facility, that we began that process just four years ago to tear down that the, the old mill built in the 40s and to begin to clean up the brownfield. And we have accomplished that. The staff has done an incredible job with our attorney and uh, been able to do the full cleanup in just four years. And which is pretty much unheard of that that process was able to be done so quickly. And and it's a new model that others are going to try to follow. Our court was really aggressive in trying to put that property that is abuts our deep water terminals that are worth about $50 million and direct access to them, get them and direct access to our travel up here get that back into productive use. And as well, not one, in the end, not one public dollar was spent on that cleanup. The other PLPs, um, Exxon and Rainier, we settled with them, they uh, paid their fair share, and then our portion was covered by insurance. So that, you know, that could have sat fallow for decades, similar to what, you know, how long has the Rainier property been sitting in uh, its current status? Close to 20 years now. Yeah. So the aggressive action of the court was fortunately we were able to use for money to get that process moving along. So that concurrently we were working to try to get reimbursement. If we could have waited until we had settled with everybody and not been able to show exactly the dollars it was taking to do the cleanup. You know, it would have been much more difficult. We'd be at least four years in the So using money that we could set aside, knowing that hopefully, again, we did have to ensure that we had been made whole again to ensure the family, uh, the other responsible parties. So now we're ready to move forward. 
Yes. So we just got that site in check, and meanwhile, we're starting on our design for the property. I wanted to give another suggestion of job roles, and, and that is the fact that Westport has moved out of the Pentendo in the industrial park of the airport and has moved them to Walmart. So not only is the Walmart building being used and they're able to expand their business, now that leads a very large industrial business for us to bring a new business into the area or expand some other local businesses. And I know that the, the State Department of Commerce has really emphasized across the state and all of the research that they've been doing is that in growing jobs and growing businesses it is best done at the local level, as Commissioner Burke was saying, rather than trying to draw somebody's business from another part of the state into your part of the state. Working with your small businesses who have already been successful and helping them to grow those successful businesses is really the key thing that we need to look at in addition to trying to steal some other businesses from outside. Can you uh, talk to us a little bit then about how, uh, how that relationship of working between the port and the EDC and perhaps sometimes the Small Business Development Center when we have a, a port-related business that uh, we're trying to provide assistance, advice, uh, support to, how, how does the port and the EDC and other, other entities, how are you communicating and, and, and uh, making sure that we're presenting and united message. We do a couple of things um, in, in joint effort with the EDC. Uh, we kind of utilize them as a marketing arm of the port so they can go out and look for businesses outside of our area to help um, fill some of our vacancies that we have. You know, one of them is the 1010 building that's coming up 100 square feet. Also the Marine Trade Industrial Park. And so we also so they, we kind of use them as our, you know, our marketing arm, as well as um, we use the, through the EDC and as well as the SBCC is the um, helping businesses that are either trying to expand or trying to be sold or trying to reorganize themselves. Uh, they're a great source of um, knowledge and advice for businesses on how to be financially strong, financially stable, and so, and, and we're blessed that SBDC is, is actually located here in Port Angeles and not somewhere else because their responsibility is far larger than just our county, but they have chosen to be located here. And actually they're located in the port building. Um, and so that's nice having some local, you know, local things that we can provide businesses when they're either struggling or need to do stuff that's outside their expertise. And they give some great, um, between the EDC and the SBDC, they give some great knowledge and some great advice. How is it